now that adorable is is out. Um, <laughs> that, that, there's a reason that I'm the moss, and that I and that I'm awkward. <laughs> you can't make me. <laughs> Hi, this is social, and this is awkward. <laughs> um, what are we doing here today, awkward? Uh, <laughs> I, I came into this with bare minimum, like not a plan at all. All right, so um, uh, there's. A D and D campaign that I like. We all know that like hunters. Oh, you use your name in the yes, score, yes, so in just about matter. every single video. I introduce myself. I'm like myself. the only one who hasn't used their name. Yep. Because I'm awkward. Uh. Boy. Yes. Is the forever DM. And then we and we have another friend who is also uh, like our secondary DM. I'm too chicken to d DM for an entire group. So what I did was was Hunter made four characters, and I get to watch him talk to himself while also I talk to myself for the entirety of it. And we decided now y'all get to watch me talk to myself. We get to hear it, and yeah. it's probably just gonna be like. I, I'll be honest, I've just been working in Google's version of PowerPoint and just making mini character sheets and everything. Those will be on screen as we go over all of these characters. Um, we have a, I have a map. It's very exciting. Um, it honestly is. It actually looks really good. I worked really hard because it's, I had to take a picture of my notebook of my notebooks map because it was hand drawn in my notebook and like go into a picture editor online because I don't own one and severely edit it so that I could see everything and I still I still fucked up because there's supposed to be uh of you know so you see like this vague shape here for for all two yeah the, uh, uh skull yeah like that's it's not a skull it's just a vague shape it's just random shapes but like, that's, that's a, a city. Like, that's still mountain. It would still be gray, but I didn't color it in because it's a city. Ooh. There's supposed to be a city here around the Underdark in Gloomleaf that I completely missed. But I saw it in my notes later when I was naming everything. Heard. And I'm so upset. I'm also very upset, like, and I don't know how you're gonna edit this, but that... that... I'm gonna highlight the specific part that you mentioned. That, well, like, I, I'm also upset that I'm pretty sure I, like, told it to ignore any weird misspellings for cities, and it just decided, nah. Oh my god. I can't. I, this is my life. <laughs> <laughs> ah! uh, let's worry about that after. Anyway. Too. Giltopia here in the corner with his squiggly line. Anyway. <laughs> Giltopia is very proud of their squiggly line. <laughs> I know they are. That might be the only squiggly line that's allowed to stay. You can see here where I like, in big letters, uh, uh, like, did Aerdenia over top of where it's actually written in my notes because it was such a sloppy, unreadable mess. Heard. That's fair. <laughs> okay, so um, let's break down a little pretense background of what they've... Uh, do you want to do the characters first, or do you want to do the um, first two sessions? Because we are in session three is where we will be starting. Yeah. But so little has happened um, that it's honestly, we're at this point where it's, you live stream or us recording this and editing it won't actually, you won't miss too much. Basically, like, um... The rectangles still trigger me because I had to blur out certain names of certain places because you wouldn't know them. Oh, is that what those rectangles are? Yeah, those are secret areas that you wouldn't know the names of. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Although John does know roughly where this one is, but unless he ever bothered to know okay. the name, because that's where he crawled out of. Oh, okay. So unless he bothered to know his name, he doesn't know what that's called. He just knows that's that, what that is. Okay, so let's uh, let's dive into the characters then. I think that would be a good starting point. Then we can dive into the sessions yes. after. Yes. Um, who's, so who's the first one? The first one I wrote was Sauron. I don't know if you like this uh, this um, font for him, but I enjoy it. I I did a different font and color. Beautiful. 
Different, <laughs> different font and color scheme for each of them. Um, it re reference what she uh, just mentioned beautiful with my glasses just came apart. He needs new glasses. His appointment's not till the end of the month. I've been waiting for a couple. All right, so I don't need to, I don't need eyesight to, to talk. To talk, yes. I just you know maybe I do because now my brain's not working. I'm trying my damnedest. Okay, oh, it's fine. I can fix it. Thank you. I, I kind of perked. Kind of perked. <laughs> kind of works. Kind of fucking works. Uh, <laughs> Is that what that was supposed to be? I don't know. I just I hate your glasses right now. It's such a shit show. They're like okay, guys. They are made out of fucking stainless titanium so what i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take a picture of my glasses i'm gonna put it in the video right here and they are snapped <laughs> like snapped at the nose like where where the two lenses come together like right out the side they are snapped so right now what i've got jury rigged which took me a whole fucking hour before a D, &D session one time yeah we were stalling because i couldn't read my notes <laughs> i just i just had my little brother talk his ass off he's very good at stalling <laughs> and and like i sat there with a paper clip and some wire some some wire pliers and cutters and like sat there and twisted it <laughs> And and then we surrounded it in tape and shit, and it's still falling out of the <laughs> shit. But the paperclip is in such a spot that you can just shove the 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 bar for the nose into the paperclip spiral, and it'll hold. Um, there's also paperclips holding the arms on, which I also did. Yeah, paperclips have saved my glasses' life. I, I doubt that. <laughs> They've elongated it at the very least. It doesn't want to live anymore, but we've not given it a choice. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm legally blind without my glasses, so I wouldn't be able to drive, I wouldn't be able to work, and then we would just be screwed. Uh, yeah, no, can't pay rent if uh, if the guy who pays rent is... Blind? I don't make enough to pay rent, guys. I make enough to pay the, uh, the utility bill. And feed the cats. And pay the cat child support, yes. Yeah. Um... But that's fine, because we make the... Yeah. All right, so first, um, I decided, and I canonically did this while I was... Or not canonically, I mentally and physically did this while driving the last couple days for each of these characters. Um, I'm going to do these in character. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, so... um. Let me flip to him and not to what is one of the many places on the pirate island, because that's where I'm at currently developing was. I am Sauron of strength. Many moons ago, I misunderstood my god. So, <laughs> yeah, on the map, you can see, uh, you can see where Sauron used to live. Yeah, strength's fall in the top right is where he's it used from. To, it used to just be, you know, uh the what was it i knew i had this name set up for it because you see it's king's turf but it was uh it was which is like the king of the desert mm -hmm. uh it's the only other named territory right now i'm gonna have to name the rest of them uh it's um i don't know i think i was pretty sure it was just like strength's domain like or something it's not too bad something dumb yeah no it's the fall now because there's nobody there after misunderstanding my god Oberon, a little bit of word mi word miscomprehension, and I thought he told me to kill my pride. He said, said I'd make a deal with him if he learned to, like, if his pride died down a little, <laughs> like. Yes, and they died down. Is the, is the, yeah, and you know what? Uh, true to my word as a fairy, uh, and especially as the fairy king, I, I rolled with it. My Patreon, Oberon. Patreon? I was thinking matriarch, and then I misspoke. My patron, Oberon, granted me unholy powers in terms for servitude. That being said, I grabbed my the relics left behind. By my tribe, the thoughts and prayers, and knuckle dusters. Yeah, and they. And I might be a spellcaster, but I love getting up and 
personal. So I want to break down his build. Like another thought I want to do is quickly break down how I have these builds. So warlocks have access to a lot of fun spells, and he's a pact of the blade. Um, I can't remember his actual. I've got their character sheets. I yeah. thought about this. I brought them in the room. Awesome. Because this is their tiny character sheet. Not everything's on there. I just put what I thought you all would want to know up up there. So from killing his back, from killing his entire tribe, he does have a haunted one backstory. As which he, is the upper right. Which I, I so he doesn't. On. Um, it's not like it doesn't affect him. Like it mentally does weigh on him. He just doesn't try to acknowledge it because he's a Leon and he's prideful. He's very strong willed is how I'm kind, he was of kind of role like, playing him. I haven't developed it too much, but he was kind of an outcast of his pride anyways. Yeah, he's a Hexblade Warlock, Pact of the Tome is what I decided. Um, his, just give him a couple more cantrips, which honestly worked out wonderful. Um, he has a lot, um, his male, he's a melee warlock. He's the most melee build warlock you can get. I don't know how to deal with him. And I shouldn't have given, like, his, I should have started him with a more simple enchanted weapon, but you know what? Uh, this is the grave. It the will grave, balance this up out in a couple this levels. This is the grave I dug myself. Um, he has one ranged spell. Mm -hmm. Everything else is self buff. Yep. And spare the dying for some reason. Yep. But why does he have spare the diamond dying? I think the reason I decided was... Oh, well, first of all, it's from his tome spell, so I get to choose from the wizard spell list yeah. using the Pact of the Tome. Um, I think the reason I decided was after killing his whole pride, he doesn't want anyone else to die. Um, so there's... Um, I am a... What's it called? I always forget the name of it. Method actor. Same. So I dance through, like, different personalities when I do these, and it's, honestly, I think you're gonna really enjoy what we do together. Alright, that's Wait, the extent of Sauron. Well, like, um, yeah, we're both, so if you hear us get very emotional, don't worry about it, and if we stop to check on each other, don't worry about it. Um, what is it? Uh, so I know you, you can speak Sylvan because of Oberon. Why did you learn Draconic and Primordial? Um, they're very aggressive languages. They're very loud, prideful languages, so I figured those were going to be the extra ones. Also, for some reason, the Haunted One gives you two extreme languages. It's very interesting. Uh, the only other thing of note here is Marshmallow. So which... that was supposed to be a boss fight, right? Yes, which we will go over when we go over what happened in Session 1. But Marshmallow is his familiar currently. Yeah, I know, like level three with a familiar, which isn't actually that crazy. But you got him at level two. Yeah. So, um, which I is. I mean, to find familiar is level one spell. It is. Um, but for a warlock, you're supposed to take the pact mm -hmm. for it. Uh, like on a wizard, you get it by default. But on a warlock, you're supposed to take the pact for it before you get it. Um, yeah, it's a. It's a Marshmallow, with, like, that was the name that they decided, because fairy dragons love cute names. Um, he's, he's purple, so he's a pretty old dragon, and he's got rainbow frills, and you'll get more of his backstory when, uh, when we get to that. Yeah, and he lives in 030. He does. He lives in 030's chest. <laughs> Which, I kind of have his, his stomach compartment where he, like, if you ever seen a few drama, how the bender can just open it. Yeah. Like a door in the front. Um. Oh, yes! I was excited for this one. Hi, guys! I'm Desmond Archangel. <laughs> um, playboy, fatherless, motherless, billionaire. But not billionaire. And not really a playboy either. But that's irrelevant. You technically... Technically... You don't know what's what happened to your your fey parents, but your your human parents are still alive, technically. Yeah, billionaire, yeah, yeah, after I murdered them. I am a changeling of sorts. I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> I am a changeling. That um, strength of six. With that strength of six, um, I am a very pickpockety guy. I like taking money. I like taking... If it's something I don't have, I want it. Rule of thumb, rule of pirating. Um, I was uh, put in a wealthy home at birth. Never met my changeling parents, but at about the age of 14, my noble family realized, holy shit, this guy's not our son. 
Yeah, you're the, the he came from Richmond, uh, which had a small dock. I remember he stole his like he stole his first boat. Yeah, I stole my boat from my parents' house and left to the sea. I wrecked it a week later and then got picked up by my next set of parents. You know, third times the charm, right? He wrecked it on Scholar's Veil, vale, where he spent like. Uh, what was it, two or three days? Yeah. Being, like, cuddled and taken care of by the monsters on the, on the shore that kind I of are- I don't know why they spared me, guys. Kind of why they're parked there. Oh, you were spared by, like, one. And it kind of, like, treated you like a small baby. And, like, it's child and protected you from the other ones. I got snuggles and they were slimy. Uh, yeah. Um, but that was, that was sort of, um... We didn't even talk about where Versali's picked up these people. No, no, no. We will get there when the actual backstory But that was... Stuff. That um, was good. My Dorgar adopted father, Brigard, and, and Exadria, my drow mother. Really weird relationship. Always running from Exadria. Never will this. Never really. You know, you would think we would have gotten smart enough to not fuck with her. Well, eventually, after spending six years in this crow and learning it, they died. Not six. You were with them since you were 14. You're 25, aren't you? Oh, shit. 11 years on this crew. Uh, <laughs> they died. You know, time flies by so fast, I thought it was six. <laughs> yeah? Um, yeah? After um, retreating from the Pirate Isle and what was it, Raptor Cove? No. Uh, Gullsport. It's Gullsport. So they, they, they all died at Gullsport, and they, oh, the only boat left you took with uh freddie and bixby um we sailed for the ports isle and then from ports isle we sailed um i pissed off you a lich yeah you didn't go that way you didn't go the short way to ports isle you went the long way so we were sailing back to ports isle um and on the way there we uh, crossed through this little ravine he, mm, that, he pissed off a lich before that didn't he no, because he passed by Desmond's crib. Oh, um, I, pit I ended up accidentally stealing the phylactery of a lich. And he cursed my crew after murdering 99% of them. And you, only they had, you only had Freddy and Bixby. 100% of them. They were already dead. Oh, were they? They died no, on not, the No, not Freddy and Bixby, but like, like the rest of the crew for that particular boat were already dead. Um, he murdered 100% of them and then cursed them to haunt me for the rest of my days. And they played dead when anyone else was around. Until recently. Didn't you, when you, like, you you fled Dead Man's Crypt, which, by the way, because this is going to be, what, like a week's travel here, and then a, week, a half a week to ports. So you, you did at least, like, two or three days were chased by this fucking lich before you threw his phylactery in Giltopia. Yeah, um, I yeeted it in the most dangerous place in the ocean. Dangerous is questionable. It's kind of like goblins. There's enough Kowatoa there to be... I think it's Kowatoa. I think it's fish folk. Slimy, kind of like murlocs from World of Warcraft fish folk. And then I went back to uh, to Brigard's hideout and booby-trapped it. A lot. Which is this thing marked Des, right? Yeah, this little tiny spot marked Des. See, any dotted lines are inside the mountain. All two is on top of the mountain. All right, the next slide. I am 030. I was created by what I have recently learned is a madman who named himself. Uh, oh God, why have we forgotten his name? Primus. Named himself Primus. I am a paladin of Primus because of that. I honestly have no idea where my magic powers come from, but they are holy in some sense. I travel aimlessly until recent group looking for master and creator, as he is my god. That's it. That's all there is to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was uh, created in Hula, uh, which is like... Um, and that's where he spent his time in, like, a library for a hot, min hot minute. 
reading books and newspapers because he was bored out of his mind. Yeah, the OC yeah. Zero is not too complicated. Um, I, I actually completely forgot to go over Desmond's build, which I'll do that real quick. Because I want them to at least know what I'm running. Um, so, what, so I kind of have no main characters in this group, but I have a de facto leader. It looks like he's actually last slide. Um, Desmond obviously is my rogue. He is, he has a crossbow hook gun, and he has a, char a ring that lets him charm a person once a day. Those are his, ma that's his magical item. The, the, uh, grappling hook crossbow was like, he, he wanted to ask for that as his magical item. I was like, that's not magical. What are you doing? Um, I actually don't remember what subclass this is. Oh, there we go. I wrote it. Um, he has the faceless background as he's always changing personalities. Um, he also has multiple personality disorder. Yes. Um, anytime he changes into a different form, it develops into a new personality. Yes. Um, we're also running the changeling... Um, a little bit differently from book, a whole group. Yes. Um, we're running it almost as a true polymorph. Yes. So my my personal opinion, and I thought I love what D and D did with changelings, and I I understand it was to balance it. My thought process is, if I give him the ability to transfer an orm into whatever, that doesn't mean that Desmond will know what to f what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, he would have to actually spend time in the form to learn what it is, like. Currently, he can transform into a Kitsune, is what I have written down. Yes. Um, but we'll get into that. He doesn't know how to use any of his abilities. Oh, hell no. You are a fucking normal ass fox when you turn into that form. Until I figure out how, until I spend a lot of time in that form and actually learn how to develop things. Yes. Which will probably be if we end up doing a lot more boat travel stuff, which who knows, or just travel stuff. He will just spend time in various forms trying to figure yeah. out new I abilities. still haven't decided what all I want to do with that. I want, like, just the, uh... I need to put in the possible encounters, depending on which direction you go, and then just, like, uh, what do you do during this week, you know? Yeah, which is gonna be interesting. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, he is a phantom subclass, which was added in, I think... Tosh's. It was added in Tosh's. Remember, remind me to put fizz bands into my, my bag of holding. Gotcha. Um, it was Don't added, question it. <laughs> it was added in ta into Tasha's. Um, I chose that subclass because it's a lot more death-oriented, and that's kind of the path I'm going to go through, is as he slowly comes to the... Because he is not accepted his parents are dead yet. He thinks they're alive via transformation, transforming ah! into them. Um, he think he's convinced they are still out there doing things because he hears people still talking about them, but it's him who has changed into them. That is all for Damien. Zero three zero. Damien, please don't Desmond. call him that ever again. Um, Ugh. I'll save that story for a different video, probably a Final Fantasy video. Um, zero three zero is he's a paladin as I went over. I'm actually. I can't remember which oath I chose. Wasn't it the, um... Oh, I don't remember. It wasn't it... It was, it was a basic oath. It was... Was it, like, vengeful or something? Because you're not really vengeful, but you're trying to figure out what happened to, uh, quote-unquote Primus. Yeah, I think that's what we ended up choosing. We had to make a stretch to, find, to fit his... There's nothing he would do. He doesn't really care about life. He... Yeah, so it's... Very interesting. He just uh, is. Um, his is very... I'm choosing spells centered for his spell uh, casting side, centered around what a robot would be able to do. Because he's a Warforged, if I haven't said that already. Soldier background, as that is literally what he was built to do, was to fight and kill things. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for some god giving him magical abilities, he would have been a fighter. Yeah, it would have been basic basic bitch i also which fighters are not basic at all but i also know. just needed a healer yeah yeah we got what a spell caster and uh a rogue so far yeah yeah i needed a healer at this point and the paladin um, warforged was a fun little concept um 
I haven't really gone over their appearance as much either. Yeah, no. We can save that for the actual video when I introduce their characters. I'll do a bit of descriptor of it in episode one. Isn't this episode one? No, this is episode zero. This is session zero. Oh. Are you sure you don't want to describe them? Yeah, I'm positive. We'll save that for the actual video itself. We won't, we won't remember to do that. I will make a note. Okay. I will remember. Will you? If not, the comic section can rip me a new one and say, What the fuck do your characters look like? Yeah. And this one is my de facto leader, my elf. John Newton is not his original name. It's not his actual name. Well, John is. John is. Uh, Newton isn't. He chose the name to feel more human. I'm John. Um, I'm not really good at these things. You I'm bought this, buddy. A alcohol connoisseur. Yeah. I, I like forgot to note that. That would have been something actually interesting to put on there. I like cocktails, I like to drink, I don't like your standard liquid um, hootin' sticks. I would just like to point out that Drag John, John's the only one with a, with a zero additive to initiative. <laughs> um, I'm a pretty standard fighter, I'm sword and board. I used to be an elf. Yep, yep. I'm roughly seven, I'm roughly, what is it, 500 years something old. No, you're only 300. I'm roughly 300 years old. I wrote them down on every sheet. Oh my god, two, yeah. I'm, all, I'm 300 years old. That's your weight. Don't I'm six me. foot one, 200 pounds. <laughs> He's not single. He's not single, guys. I'm married. Married with a daughter. And I have a daughter, yes, and she's the light of my life. I haven't seen her in a while. What is her name? Why was it again? It was, it was Sylvie, wasn't it? Yes. I have his whole family. Hold up. Let me move. There's a whole page for John's family. Hold I'm up. the most developed character in this party. Uh, yeah. As of right now, I mean, Des is getting there. That's not the right one. There it is. I found it. What is it? It is, um, oh my god, these names. What am I doing? Yes, yeah, Sil Sil Silvillis. But you call her Sylvie. Yeah, Silvillis. Um, that's her adult name, right? Sylvie mm -hmm. was, was her child name. Um, me and my, what, six brothers? I believe. Hold on, let me count. <laughs> yes. Me and my six brothers were kidnapped by a beholder. Yes. And experimented on. Uh, to my knowledge, each and every one of us were turned into a simic hybrid. The reasons of his experimentation were unknown to us. Um, I am the current head of a very famous household in the kingdom of Lirithian. That's it's what I figured. It's I was... literally named after Corlin, because it's the High Elf Kingdom. Uh, the kingdom of Lirithian. I run a very popular, or I run a very, yeah, very popular is what I'm going to use for it, um, Magitech. Um, sorry guys, I'm really really not good at this. Terramance. Called Terramance. Sorry, I'm getting flustered, guys. This interview is oh, not my thing. You, you've got this, darling. <laughs> you've got th I can't get her accent. Oh my god! I can't find Vining Flower! She's supposed to be Southern! Uh, the fuck was that? <laughs> everyone else was so excitable for this. I was not. You've got this. <laughs> um, I ended up escaping the Beholder layer myself. Most, quite a few of my brothers are still missing. So eventually, I plan on taking this ragtag group of barbarians, idiots, and drunkards, and horrors into this beholder lair and having and having them help me slay it. Yes. Um, I'm also currently the only one keeping them out of trouble. Desmond, put down that child. <laughs> Sauron, stop eating the cats. Why is he? Why is he eating them? He, know, he knows I'm a tabaxi, right? <laughs> Whoops. Sauron, what the fuck? It called me a bastard. Honey, darling. I had to show it up. But anyways, I'm John Newton. Um, I am a sword and board fighter. 
the only ones you know that made it out are in Yale, which is the, uh, what, the, the, I forget which one he is. The mic can't hear you, girl. The second eldest, and he, he rescued the youngest and got out of there. So there's the triplets and one more, right? Yeah, the triplets and the one who caused the problem. Oh, yes, um... The quick backstory and why you want to save that because that will probably come up in the mission itself. I mean, it's your backstory though. Well, yeah, I guess John knew about it. So, um, John basically his fa his youngest brother, may who was always overlooked by the other ones. No, he's he's the third. Is he the third? He's the third son. You're the first. John's the first. Uh, Danielle is the second. Curti. But he'll go. But you've always called him Kai, K Y, because uh, that's his kid name, and he never grew up. So um, Kai, the third brother, may was always went out gambling, always asking John when he became the head of household for money to pay his debts that he lost. Um, eventually made a debt to a beholder, betting the whole family on a game of chance. They ended up lo He ended up losing because the beholder rigged the game. And the whole family got kidnapped and dragged to the Beholder's Lair to for um, experiments that I'm exclu that I personally do not know why. I left that all that up to her, so that will be found out in the Beholder stuff. And that's John Newton. I think the last character of note that they need to know about is Vining Flower. No, Vining Flower. I I was just gonna wait till we got to her in the session one. Because she's, she's my, because I'm so new to DMing, my DNPC, yep, rage, everyone rage. Uh, she, she's, she's not as bad as, I, I hope she's not as bad as that. She's a good support NPC to help us. Yes, because I was worried about balancing issues, but then, but then, you know, Marshmallow. So, uh, So, speaking of Marshmallow, it's time to get into the actual... So, uh, we... basically, the begin in the beginning... Ignore that third one. In the beginning, <laughs> that third one's Vining Stab. Oh. Um, these are all of the key NPCs that I could rem that, that I felt were important enough to write down. Okay. Uh, they were. Uh, there was a guy named V because I'm horrible at developing. I have since fully developed Versalis. Um, each person was individually approached by Versalis. Uh, all four of our main crew, um, who is like this dark cloaked figure, like no, like with with a completely unclear goal, and he is he hired them as cell swords. I, th I think he found Des in his hideout. Mm -hmm. Uh, found where was Newton? Um, Newton was traveling. He was in probably some random town. Newton was somewhere. Uh, cause he is looking, a side goal of his is to try to find a cure to the simic hybridness, and if he, which I'm going to assume is going to be an impossible task, and if he can't find that, his goal is to kill the beholder. So he's just trying to get stronger. Yeah. Uh, 030 in his library in Hewloft, where he's talking to those nice old ladies. I yeah. Remember, I remember role playing that just cause we were curious and fu having fun. And just finding Sauron on a, a fucking hill. You know, basically standard, like, find motivation for each of them and ask them to meet up at uh, this town called Karen, uh, which is, like, this small tabaxi human village on the edge of a, of a forest. Uh, the Flaming the Yeah, Flaming Forest. I almost called it the Flaming Woods. No. Um, and... I think everyone saw Marcus at first, except for John, which is this halfling that ha follows Versalis around and seems very tired. A uh, very plump, tan halfling. Uh, which John's first introduction was they were staying in their in their rooms in the inn in Karen, and John's first introduction to Marcus was this fat robin smacking into his window. <laughs> with a with a letter for him to read, which John actually recognized Marcus mm -hmm. uh, from a Elven party a very long time ago when Marcus was like small, yeah, small baby boy, uh, not baby like kid. But I thought that was pretty important to note. I'm sorry. Let me pull up the Karen notes because. 
because now my brain's just starting to crash. Again, half-baked plan, guys. Yeah, this is basically just me cliff notes of all the important <laughs> things that happened. We can skip over all the things the characters specifically did and just cliff note the major yeah. events. Basically, Dez went around flirting. Uh, 030 went around the forest. Just tried to explore the forest. I want. I actually want to mention. I thought it was funny. He was just trying to go in the forest, so I had to place an owl bear in front of him to get. And he still wouldn't leave the forest. <laughs> um, Sauron met the Grimalkin, mm -hmm. and I forget what. No, no. John spent the whole time bartending. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the first major event, I'm pretty sure... Was the, was Marcus smacking into your fucking window. Yeah, that's when the party got together for Rasala's mission. Finally. Which yeah. was to find... Uh, to find a pendant in... He had... So, Rasali doesn't know where any of these things he's looking for are. So he heard rumors that there was a pendant in uh, a cave not too far into the forest next to Karen. Um, so the party had to go walking into the forest and uh, yes, and discover and, look, and try and look for that cave and look for where that's at. Upon doing so, and I think Sauron met her before everyone else, uh, they encountered Vining Flower uh, who is a like a druid sort of like outreach guard that um I, like, I believe, like, she literally, like, you all got to the sign where the path split or whatever, and she held a spear in y'all's face. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you disarmed her, and she put a new spear in your face. Yeah. So, uh, after a lot of talking, we ended up convincing her to at least take us there, then dragged her through the cave. Yes. She explained that she took over when her father died, I believe, the which was a... Like, I don't remember how many years, but I think I'm gonna recalibrate it because my timeline's still shaky. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, that, that was, like, not too long ago, uh, and, like, they lost him to this dangerous area. He used to patrol this forest. But yeah. So, that was the, um, we ended up going through this, um, cave that was a big... I mean, you can probably explain a lot better. I can't what so, this cave was. <laughs> you don't remember? Um, I, it's been a couple months. So I felt really, really cool. All throughout the forest, there were little fairy encounters and, like... We uh, killed a Kitsune. Kitsune. Uh, That's where Deadsman got the ability to shape change into it. And there, they get to this, uh, to the cave. And it was, it was labeled, um... Where's the sign? Not Swimmer's Lake. The Cave of Dead Lives. So... It used to say, the sign used to say, Nico's home, visitors welcome. And now the sign says, Cave of Dead Lives, stay out at all costs. And there was like another sign stab there that said, bless all nine lives of the fool who enters deeper. And there was a drawing of uh, a cat and the name uh, Sharis, which is, or Sharis, which is like, Charis. which is a female like demigoddess of cats. So we went through this cave, which was basically a bazaar of a lot of fake creatures. Yes. So what you did, like, the see, tacked onto the entrance of the cave was this house that, like, the back wall entered into the cave. Mm -hmm. And the house was in fucking ruins, where it looked like something burst from within it, out to the outside. Um, and you, you entered, and, like, I was really proud of the map. There was this huge hall full of cages a lot of them broken open and destroyed there were claw marks everywhere things littered all over the ground um and like you you all were investigating and uh, i think it was sauron who approached this this corpse of this like sort of wildcat looking thing that was tinted purple where it was still rotting mm -hmm. and this next to it another corpse of what looked like a spiked dog and that's when I had this first encounter of these two blink dogs uh, that had gone feral. Uh, where obviously some sort of accident happened here. And um, 
when they discovered the office, they learned that a fairy Nico had moved into this cave and was showing up. He was a hunter from the Feywild, and he had three pet blink dogs, and he was kind of doing like a, not a petting zoo, because the things are too dangerous, but sort of a, a walkthrough zoo of his things, and that the fairy dragon he had had unlocked the Displacer Beast cage, meaning it to be a harmless prank. And the thing about Displacer Beasts and Blink Dogs is that they hate each other with a fiery passion. Um, yeah. Um, so we um, ended up finding this um, fairy dragon that was still there. Um, after stabbing it once, uh, we recruited it, and that's how, and uh, Sauron that's... made a pact with it to be his familiar. Yeah, that's how, like, like which, by the way, this whole time, uh, Sauron's holy symbol is, like, glowing and everything, where Oberon's very bored and very active in his, in his patron's life. Um. So from there, we wrapped up a bunch of things, and we moved on to, we waited around for Versalis to give us the next mission. Um. Basically, um. We gave Versalis the pendant we found in there, and. And it ended up not being the right thing. I'm pretty sure Versalis just threw it back at Sauron, who ended up keeping it. Yeah, so we left. So he told us to leave towards. What was it? Nornsport. Nornsport, which is a dwarven Yorn. port. Yorn. Yornsport. But I wanted to go over Marshmallow's hoard, because Marshmallow had like a huge nest of sheets and, and silk shirts and shit mm -hmm. and, and everything, but he uh, when he was like, I don't know where to put this and 030 offered it, he cut down his hoard, um, so I specifically made a slide just for Marshmallow's hoard and as it expands, I will keep doing it where <laughs> he, he's got like two silver pieces, uh, a green silk shirt uh, three random fey wings off of like smaller fey creatures, not fairy wings, like just three random ones, two owl bear feathers, and then like five of his favorite book pages mm -hmm. uh, that had like drawings of old fairy tales and stuff. Um, it's all my artwork there. I, was, uh, I had to find. And then like, recently, like in Yornsport, he gets a, a flag from the gift shop. Yeah. So um, we ended up going to Yornsport. Uh, we didn't really have any direction he apparently left us a message we went to a couple bars all the bars were really interesting i don't want to spoil them for him because i assume we'll be coming back to your support as we Probably. do have an uh, overlying interest there at least one of us does. yeah because there's all these was just like well go here i guess we'll like we'll see if it's there like i believe the letter he left for you there was just like I don't know, it's either in the ocean or somebody fished it up. Maybe. Find it. I don't really care. Enjoy the quaint dwarf town. <laughs> so we did a couple role-playing things at a couple bars. We ended up leaving. Um, zero through zero stumbled on a submarine that was a life's work of another dwarf craftsman. Yeah. Because Zero Three Zero, while he was in Karen, uh, like he spoke a lot with this older woman who had, uh, where her husband dead, uh, would uh, was working on a thing, was very mechanical and working on a thing with um, the the dwarves of Yornsport, uh, a radar of sorts. So Zero Three Zero was very invested in finding that. So um, after he found the radar, it was. It was built into the submarine, wasn't it? Yes. And which is basically a submarine sonar. Um, he decided humans don't need this technology, and that hasn't been developed on yet further. Um, that's probably going to be the start of the next session. I'm not excited. Um, mm -hmm. So they ended up gathering allies, a couple dwarves here and there, a crazed dwarf who runs a... Oh, I love him. Hold up. I gotta find his name. Session three. That's who it's part. Where is his name? I gotta find it. It's the it's the crap shack. The crap shack. Deerlick Scrap Forge. Very drunk, very proud. <laughs> That's my notes for him. <laughs> and the port Yornsport has been raided by this massive sea monster, right? Yeah. So Yornsport is a tourist trap. Alright? And there's no tourists in town when they arrive because these this sea monster 
is out there, like, scaring off all the boats and crashing all of the ships. It, like, they can only, like, they're also, like, a fishing town, so, like, they, it takes all their people just to get one boat in and out safely every day. So they've been, um, hindered to find this amulet that is on the bottom of the fucking ocean. They need, um, a Deer Lake's boat, who is their only, um, underwater scavenging boat. It's how he yeah. gets all the stuff for his... He's got, like, a, a grappling hook on his boat. If you've ever seen a Wind Waker, like, that style, how Link gets treasure out the middle of the ocean, it's, it's that. Um, so first things first, they had to defeat the sea monsters. Um, couple rounds, I think it was a pretty okay encounter. Um... Yeah, it ended up being two sea monsters, and that's why nobody could beat it, because nobody thought about it. <laughs> yeah, because there was two of them, not just one. One rocking the boat, the other destroying the boat. Yeah, the any time one of them got really low on hit points, it would it would dive down, and the other one would take over. Yeah, so it kept... It was basically outsmarting uh, the dwarves. Um, we defeated the sea monster, we got the iron band, and we gave it to Versalis, who also made it. He's his... not picked up the thing yet. Have we not? No. You, we literally ended after you defeated the monsters. It was the next day you were going to go grab it and mm, give it to Versailles. Okay, so actually that's where we end the session. So, see, not yeah. too much has happened. Um, it's just been a lot of world building, a lot of character development. I work very hard on my my PCs. Now, I do want to go my, and throw a couple warning labels if you have watched this far. So... Um, this video will be uploaded probably a month before the next session is recorded. I'm so sorry. And then the, those videos will be sporadic and I will be advertising them when we're going to ooh, record a session with other videos. And keep an eye out for my current Gloomhaven campaign cause, or, um, Gloomhaven videos because that's where all of the updates are and that's a very solo oriented campaign so you get to hear, just hear me talk to myself for no reason for a couple hours. <laughs> Basically, but yeah. that's where I'm putting all of the in-game updates or in-game the um, What to expect what to look forward to But do you have anything else? Um, uh, like just My brain's crashing, uh, I think you you missed like Freddy and Bixby got introduced to the party <laughs> Yeah, Freddy and Bixby, which are skeletons, um, they're the remainders. They're the cursed crew member that was in Desmond's backstory. Yeah. Um, they are the only people keeping Desmond from going on a murdering rampage. Basically. My favorite, like, joke that came from that, aside from the fact that for some reason Deerlick did the most damage in that fight, which was fucking hilarious. If I remember, he lost his weapon, so he just threw himself at them. <laughs> yeah. Um... But is that is that Freddy's supposed to be really shit with a gun, and he got, he got a shot off on one of the monsters? It was pretty great. All right, um, it was a really fun encounter. Honestly, look forward to these. These are great sessions. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna do the audio for it, and we will be recording these and posting them. Mm. Um, with late little, they're not gonna be. They're gonna basically be podcasts, so I might end up posting them to Spotify too. Um, but they will be, the YouTube video will have cinematic, or not cinematics, but, um, stilled images of the character sheets and stuff like that, so look forward to it. I really hope you do. This has been Social, and... Mahakli. Thank you so much for coming out, you guys. Uh, we still haven't figured out a consistent ending yet, but y'all have a great night.